Next on the list here I want to talk about, it seems like for some reason, I'm not really too sure why, but usually at Bergheim, the weekend after a big event, so last weekend was CSD, right, which is essentially Berlin Pride. And there was loads of really cool events and Ber Bergheim had a really long kind of you know um weekend a plan there loads of other venues had really good parties and essentially you know they had the they had the flipping street fairs and floats on the streets and stuff like it was really crazy nice little carnival atmosphere there to celebrate gay pride over there at flipping berlin so everything was good so common knowledge would tell you that the week after a special event is usually the best time to go to Bergheim because it's usually empty and it's usually full of locals. So it's usually the best time to go to get a real kind of sense of what the club is about. Because it's one thing to go to a special event because you get a lot of more bang for your buck. You get to see loads of people on one big lineup and it's a special event, but sometimes it can be too ram, too busy and it's not enjoyable. But if you go the week after, it's usually perfect. So sometimes a week after New Year's Eve is great. And obviously the week after flipping um, Easter holidays is great also, or a bank holiday. For some reason, this past weekend wasn't like that. Even though it was a week after CSD, it sounds like by all accounts, judging by the flipping Bergheim community subreddit. So I don't know what happened, what was the deal? Cause I checked the lineup and of course there was Oscar Molero there. There was Maron playing and whatnot, Justin Perry and whatnot. There's some good names playing, but it wasn't like a crazy lineup that I think should have brought such a flipping roadblock of a of a you know it, it shouldn't be that much of a roadblock i don't think uh, of a lineup but for some reason it brought everybody out and the queues there were absolutely nutty and people are getting all upset about it all over the subs and there's a couple of stories here i want to talk about or accounts from people that i feel like need to be kind of you know highlighted on here because people on the burger and summer are absolutely crazy the first one I want to go through is the flipping toilet etiquette um, post that somebody highlighted here, right? <laughs> which I think really kind of speaks to the overall madness that occurred this past weekend and why people are so pissed off. So this post starts as follows. How the fuck can you take one toilet cubicle for 20 to 30 minutes plus? It's so disrespectful to the queuers and the whole system. And the line cutters are also fucking nuts. One time yesterday, this girl with red, red colored hair, a local you probably know, and her friend up to go up to her line. I say, what are you doing? Go wait like everybody else. Um, had waited 25 minutes by this point. I was getting upset over the whole situation, so I didn't have patience. They then have, say that their friends are in the toilets. When people leave the toilets, no one was there. And I said something like, hey, don't remember. And they quickly went into the toilet and I was pushing up the door and they both super aggressively kicked in the door so it closed. Like, who does that? Fucking assholes. So rude. My morning rant. So this person was, you know, queuing in the toilets at Bergheim, waiting to go there and actually do their business, not actually going there to do drugs or anything and actually wanting to use the toilet and everybody's kind of, you know, taking up space in there. And this is something that happens quite often there because for some reason they tend to close the panorama bar toilets pretty early. I'm not too sure why, maybe because just for, just to help out the flipping staff and make sure that they don't have to stay there all night or all morning kind of cleaning up and shit. But once they close the pano toilets, it kind of becomes every man and woman for, for themselves because there's only two toilets left i think the the ones on the Bergheim main floor and then of course the ones maybe downstairs right next to the cloakroom area which are meant to be the flinter ones and shit which are meant to be the ones that you should be only going for the to use the toilet and the loo but in this situation everybody has to take a bit of personal responsibility and accountability and be like you know what if you're in the queue and somebody tries to cut in line especially in a toilet that's just unacceptable unless it's somebody that legitimately needs to use it you shouldn't let anybody cut in front of you in any queue let alone a toilet queue it's just not acceptable especially when everybody's waiting because for the most part when you go to the places like Bergheim everybody's pretty well behaved in the queue um they're pretty respectful they hold the line you know what I mean they're not trying to cut in line and whatnot so and everybody's kind of waiting for their turn so that person who legitimately feels like they need to cut in line i don't think their desire to go into the toilet trumps anybody else's so you shouldn't in my opinion be letting anybody go in front of you no matter what they say no matter about a friend or anything it doesn't matter the moment you step out of the toilet in my opinion unless the person's right there because i've seen it before happened before where people are in the cubicle and they're texting probably their friends or they're in the cubicle and they're coming to meet them there that's one thing but if you leave the toilet and then you want to go get people to come in line with you or come in the cubicle that's not on once you leave you leave like i'm not having that and it's not a situation about oh yeah let's let wet that that person's in there's my friend and they're not your friend and like in this scenario if you want to be kind and let them in there because you feel like their friends are in there cool but the moment that toilet door opened and you didn't see anybody 
I would have ran in there myself. I would have ran in there so fast. I wouldn't have cared. I would have ran in there straight away and closed the door. You're not flipping going in there. And I think people, for whatever reason, are not afraid of comp. Oh, yeah, let's say afraid of confrontation over there, which I understand because you want to be chill. And, you know, Berlin isn't really about that time. I think the whole time I've been there over the past, I don't know, like 10 plus years and whatnot, I don't think I've seen a single fight on the dance floor, if anything. So clearly, there is a reason why that is the case and you don't want to upset the balance of things cool or the vibe or the ambience but surely there comes a point where you draw a line in the sand you say nah this is where i don't play and the part where i don't play personally because i think i'm a pretty chill and cool guy laid back when it comes to these type of things is cues i don't play with the cue cutting like no one's cutting in front of me in the queue it's just not gonna happen and then the next account here is even worse right um this is outside so it's one thing maybe somebody cutting a line in the toilet queue because you know it's a toilet queue it is what it is um, even if they do cut you know you're gonna get gonna get in there eventually you, even if you have to wait half an hour you're not gonna wait four hours like you do in the queue but from what i've been reading online some people have been waiting up to four hours um in the queue this is a non-special event also so it's fucking brutal it's maybe a bit humid over there so it's extra awful and obviously your nerve-wracking it's nerve-wracking queue because you know the flipping rejection rate is so high over there so anyway, all that into account, look at this person's account. Look at this person's story, right? The scum of Berlin. Today I stood in line for six hours. Stupid, I know, but I'm very stubborn and I couldn't let go of the sunk cost of already having queued for a couple of hours. I read reports in the updates, um, Fred, that significant amount of people cut through the sorry, cut throughout the night. I befriended a bunch of people in the line early in the night. When we were closer to the snake, a smaller group went ahead of us to cut. I walked past and stepped in front of them and sternly and loudly told them everybody else waited X amount of hours in line and they needed to go back. They were shameless. They didn't they didn't cut us, but rather hung around and cut people who were a bit further behind us. <laughs> that is really really heinous behavior you don't cut in front of me you then go and cut in front of people behind then another group tried to cut and when i confronted two of them again loud enough to be heard by others they said that they were joining their friends and in response to my arguments that berliners don't wait five hours in line ask anyone or the bouncers while i was preoccupied during this exchange i was outnumbered and more of their group went around me and joined their friends once we got closer to the snake i told a couple of people i met in to join me and to join me in cutting in front of the people who cut us in the end when the long string of us who met each other today got to the door we were all denied very swiftly in in burst fire <laughs> imagine <laughs> imagine they did all of that to try and get back at the cue cutters but then when they got to the front they all got denied is that what i'm reading right um i'm sure i'm reading it right in the end when we <laughs> went the long string of us <laughs> who met each other today got to the door we were all denied very swiftly in burst fire we stayed divided either queuing solo or in pairs i can stomach waiting in line for six hours and being turned away there is seemingly no foul play there but i can't stand the scummy and despicable parasites i described above if they cut people in plain sight because they feel so entitled and uh, they are so too impatient for hedonistic escapades i wonder what they do when no one is looking Ooh, you're trying to you're trying to equate line cutting to being a pedo or something like this person needs to check chill um in any case as petty as it is i i was fish i w i wish suffering upon them mama mia and maybe if i wrote this after sleep and without adrenaline still rushing through me i'd be more appropriately wish that they find peace instead it was also disappointing to know that no one acted in solidarity with me i was doing all the talking people um could have just stood next to or behind me but no one offered their support which was more discouraging anyways thanks for listening to my rant so imagine this person was really really pissed off and frustrated angry furious and of course, as per usual with these flipping hipsters over there at that club, they were just all flipping passive. They didn't want to flipping engage. They didn't want to say anything. They didn't want to upset the apple cart because they all were looking after number one. But in this effort, I think personally, in these situations, you're actually looking after each other if you actually help somebody. That's what you're actually doing, oddly enough. Because if you'd step in and say something, that's also going to help and limit the time that you have to wait. Personally, if it's me, 
I've never ever let anybody cut in front of me in a queue out there. I don't care. Like I've got into actual arguments in that queue with people. Like I'm just not gonna have it. So one time I got into an argument with a girl and she was talking mad shit. And then you know after a while she just got uncomfortable and left the queue. You know you kind of have to swing that you know big black boy energy around sometimes. So <laughs> and then another time with some guys who were trying to cut in the queue and I just didn't want to argue with them. So I just decided to just walk in front of them. I mean, they cut in front of me, so I just cut in front of them. And that was it, just like a silent little protest. And that was basically it. But I think it's incredibly rude. Um, and I also think it's incredibly unnecessary because let's just say there is this unwritten rule. No one knows this because no one's said it officially, but let's just say there's this unspoken rule, right? Unspoken, unwritten rule that if you're a local, um, if you're if you live there over there, right, and you or you're a regular, wherever it may be, that you have the luxury of cutting the queue right that's what they they say like they know you they've seen you all the time you live here you shouldn't be queuing behind all these tourists cool but then ask somebody just ask just go up to them if you went up to a regular tourist and said hey me and my friends are regulars we come here all the time is it okay if we cut in front of you because you know we're here we don't want to queue some most people in my opinion nine times out of ten will say okay but I think it's just the entitlement of cutting in line in front of somebody and feeling like you deserve to go in front of them is just a thing that really pisses me off. Because legitimately, if you ask me beforehand, more likely than not, I'm going to let you in front. Especially if I'm, you know, a bit tooted up and whatnot. I've got a little bit of bubbly in me and whatnot. I'm probably in a good mood. I'm feeling good. I want to chat. I want to hang out and shit. I'm probably going to say, yeah. And even if I'm not in a good mood, I'm probably going to say, yeah, anyway. Most people will. But it's just the fact that you take it upon yourself to cut in front of people, not say sorry, not say excuse me, not ask permission, and just assume that you are allowed to flip and cut in front you know while people are waiting outside in the queue for ages and it's you know so what were you doing in that time here i am in the queue waiting for four hours or whatnot to get into this fucking club and you were doing what you were out there having the fucking chicken season salad you were out there fucking scratching your pussy and sleep while you were sleeping and i have to stand in the queue and you have the luxury of waking up when you want and clickety clackling along the fucking queue and getting there when you want nah that's not cool that's not cool in the slightest so i really do have sympathy for people who kind of go through this but but I do think there is um you just need to stand up for yourself you can't let these guys come in and kind of push you around and cut in line and think that they can you know do and say what they want because they have some sort of level of superiority and again it's a club it's not that deep if you don't get in you can go to plenty of others in that city and go and have a good time but you shouldn't stand there and accept any level of disrespect that's just my point of view i'm just not going to accept it in any slightest way possible but i do appreciate the hellfire this person had right where they legitimately legitimately felt like they would wish kind of you know what what they say <laughs> um I wish only suffering upon them. I love this. I love this honesty in it because sometimes you do feel like that way. When somebody gets in and you don't, you usually feel like that. You know what I mean? You just want them to fucking trip over and bust their teeth on the stairs as they're walking up or something. So I'm glad that they were honest and said it as they actually mean it. So big up that poster and big up everybody that went during the week. I hope you had your funds.